Welcome to the miserable, screwed-up world of hand-drawn polar graphs. You may think I'm being a little extreme, but just wait till we get going. Um, yeah, they look pretty, right? And there are things we could talk about that would help us classify certain types of these things. Like, I don't know, r equals 2, right? That's a circle. We know that if theta doesn't matter and r is constant, you're going to carve out a circle. That's, that's nice. And this is kind of cool, this spiral thing over here. That kind of makes sense if you think about, well, r equals theta, where the bigger theta gets, right? As theta goes around, r gets bigger and bigger. So that makes a spiral. That's kind of neat, I'll admit it. But a lot of the rest of these things, to really give a full discussion about the symmetries that cause three flower petals or four flower clovers or uh, these loopy things or these things with the belly buttons, you know, it would take a while to really get into how you graph polar plots um, elegantly, talking about all the stuff. And I just don't want to spend four weeks of class on this or, or really anything more than half a lesson. So we're going to get you through the nitty gritty that you need to graph these things. Um, because at some point in a trigonometry class, whether it's now, it is now, or in college, they will expect you to hand draw one of these things. And if you want to dive in deeper and learn about all the different fun shapes there are out there, great power to you. But we're just going to go over some a rough technique that always works. And this is where the pain starts. See this big table here? This thing, you're going to be filling these things out. So I hope you haven't forgotten your unit circle. We're going to need it. All you do is you take the theta value and you plug it into that equation, wherever you see theta. So what's the cosine of zero? It's one. What's one squared? It's still one. What's one times four? Four. So you say, okay, theta equals zero, r equals four, right there. Great, we are one sixteenth done. This is why it gets a little bit tedious. So you can think of it as good unit circle training. It is, and uh, for that reason alone, it's not worthless. Now let's move on to the next one. Um, pi over six, we plug that in. Cosine of pi over six is square root of three over two. You square it, you get three quarters, times four, you get three. And then keep on going, two, one, at pi over two, you get zero. Okay, so what are, we, what are we getting here? And I picked an equation for you, in this example anyway, that's gonna work out nice, so it shouldn't be that hard to plot points on here. But you get this far into the graph and you're thinking, this sucks, I'm just gonna guess on the rest of these things. Okay, I, I think I know what this shape looks like. Here we go, boom, done. It's a circle that's a little offset. Do not guess, because there are lots of shapes in polar coordinates, right? Some of them are just, whoa, sorry about that. Some of them are just these things where it is a circle like this. But some of them do weird stuff, like this circle within a circle thing. And it's hard to tell when you've got one versus the other. So I want you to keep on going and just, you know, grit your teeth, put on your big kid pants, just make it through this table over here. Because when you get to hand drawing, not using a computer, but hand drawing polar graphs at some point in a trig class in college, you will need to just have a little patience and make it through this graph. It's not going to take you more than five or ten minutes if you really know your unit circle well. The trick is patience. Now, I've gone ahead and filled in an example um, of why you, you don't want to just guess. This shape is not terribly obvious at first. But once you go through these numbers... You see, first of all, they're all positives. There's no negatives. Um, and then there's a certain pattern. Once you fill out more of this table, you can start to see the shape that is unfolding here. And there's a lot of possible shapes. And I really don't want you to guess because if you're in a test and you just guess half of this thing, well, half credit. And you could have gotten all the credit if you just spent a little bit more time making yourself a full table of these points right here. So no shortcuts, guys.